Hello, hello, and hi, you doing? This is reality with DVD. Shout out to Mother Wendy for the how you doing? And um, this is going to be my episode recap of The Real Housewives of Potomac. Let me just say, <laughs> it has been rough doing these videos on The Real Housewives of Potomac. I don't get my best review, uh, I don't get my best views on The Real Housewives of Potomac, but I'm lower. <laughs> I, I actually get my best views on my pipe and high teeth, and that just really recently, and that's because, you know, I use the formula of the queen of reality TV. However, um, I, I get my best recaps on, uh, my best recap views actually on sisters and, uh, uh, all the queen's men, but let's get right on into and the team, of course. Let's get right on into the recap. The episode opens up where it left off with uh, Naka getting crowned to be the queen of Potomac. And uh, Karen's acting like she just doesn't care about her being the queen of Potomac because Karen, uh, she just now moved to Potomac. And now, see, here's the deal. Let me go back on writing the divorce on this because I'm not bragging on them about opulence and whatnot. But I did notice about because I don't I don't recap uh the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills but Kyle's white party versus all the parties on Potomac and um when they go shopping and they show the dollar amount it's very rare on Beverly Hills that you see anything less than a thousand. That was kind of Riggedy to see son spend forty six thousand and then see them spend sixty eight thousand some 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 cents. Excuse me, but um, in her alchemist TV, my girl over there, she supports me. I support her, but uh, <laughs> she was talking about last night how you had those silent burps because you're talking and. Uh, yeah, and that's what's going on with me right now. But let's get on into this episode. Uh, it's not because we eat. Sometimes I drink something to, you know, wet my palate while I'm talking. So I won't get hoarse. That's um, Peacock playing. I got the commercial version of Peacock. And see, this is what I mean. Right here, we have uh, Nacka talking about how she purchased her home and spent a lot of money, of a lot of money in Potomac. I purchased my home and I spent a lot of money in Potomac. Okay, you spent a lot of money in Potomac. Uh, let's see the glamorous life. Let's see the furniture when you buying the furniture, putting it in. Now I'm getting what uh, Rodney is saying about this, but I, I, the whole thing with Monica, that was different for me. But you know, this lady is literally bragging about her riches. Instead of coming on here with that witchcraft junk, you should have done that first. Let us see you buying your furniture. And she said, well, you know, Karen's telling, well, since you, um, um, you know, you, you think you can take my crown. This is not my crown. Since you are grand dumb 2084, um, whatever that number was to the zip code, you can, uh, you know, you can come visit the 20854 grand dumb Grand dumb. I, I actually live in Potomac, and, and I'm talking to Giselle. Giselle, Giselle lives in Bethesda. <laughs> but see, Giselle comes back, and uh, her um, confession says, well, I own my home in Bethesda. Yeah, you own that Lego built home. Uh, some of it looks like little Lego, uh, you know, I said in previous videos that it looks like you know how you build the legos some of them yellow some of them green that's what that house looks like just a hosh posh of bush so they go play night golf and this looks fun and and this is actually one of my better episodes had they started out like this and then the chicken it bingo and all that old type of bull crap had they started out like this right here then it could have been you know better However, you know, things are going to quickly decline in this uh, episode. But initially, 
they were having fun. I enjoyed them, you know, talking together at the um, playing the nighttime golf. And then, you know, um, Karen goes up to um, Karen and says, Oh, okay. I said, I saw you walk away. I saw you walk away when I was, um, get, get, when, um, when Nicka was getting her award. I mean, no, no, just, just, just don't pay attention to yourself. You know, she just bullshit. <laughs> and my goodness, they talk about their horrible. Uh, situation show with Giselle and uh, oh boy, I'm not gonna spend no time on that foolishness because we all know that he pay a day, right? We all know this. So after Karen and Wendy, um, Karen and Candace talk, Candace lets her know that you know Giselle's a stupid petty bitch, but uh, Kiana gets in confession, like, baby. Hello, 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 hello. When I tell you that confessional look is everything. No one, see, Wendy tried to tell you all production that it was Kiana that should have been the housewife. That's why she brought her into the fold instead of Big Goofy over there. But yeah, she was a little upset that it wasn't Wendy and, um, Aneka who took her out to, um, no, I mean, Wendy and, uh, Candace that didn't come check on her while she was sick. And, uh, then it comes out at the table that she actually did check on her because she bought a ginger ale. So what's up with that? See, production, we see you. We see you trying to clean up Giselle's image. Already broken, already dusty, no fixing Giselle and her nothingness, okay? You can't do it. Jesus couldn't do it. Giselle. Oh, yeah, you know, Grace graduated, you know, she's very excited. And I just want you to know, Karen, I appreciate you. I took my advice, but, you know, took your advice, but then here she is going to shade Karen and confessional. But, you know, at the table, you know. Can say congratulations. So what's the problem here? Oh no, 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 no. We got to make up shit and talk about how they were making faces. I actually don't believe that they were making faces in conversation about grace. Anybody with common sense knows that from the beginning of this show. And watching this show since Candace has been on this show, she's had an affection for Grace. But, you know, go ahead and make shit up on the show and let them do that production. So it's Mia who brings up how Ty delayed and through. Shout out to giving you the real take. Um, Florida is. And how dangerous it can be for black people down there. And uh, it's almost like it's on another little country. Baby, when I tell you that the people in Florida must be happy <laughs> that they're going to be graced by the presence of Giselle Bryant's daughter and everything is going to change once she gets there. No more racism. Jesus got her. Jesus is going to bless her. And everything's going to be rosy in Florida because Giselle Bryant's daughter is there. So I think... What Wendy was doing while robbing Big Head itself, Roble, is over in confessionals um, coming up with a scheme and, a, and the bullshit that Ty set up. She does not understand that Wendy is trying to formulate the right way to say to Miss Hale that, you know, it's probably not the best time to send a black child there. That's why she goes on to say, swallows takes her time and says, I probably want to send my sons there. Come on now. <laughs> so, there's the grand dame giving her speech. She was like, oh, we have a lot to be thankful for. And I, I just want to thank everybody at the table. We want each other to be successful. But, nope, nope, nope. Can't leave it there. But Miss Hell got to come in and say, ooh, well, you you, you did accuse me of dating a rapper. And then Mia says, uh, so here goes lying ass Mia, you know, because Miss Hill was talking about how um, Karen would say that Giselle is trying to destroy family. Yeah, you do. 
you do. That's that's what you do on the show. And that's why you shouldn't be allowed to remain on the show in the capacity of the uh, force multiplier. Shout out to uh, big headed Carlos Kango. Because you're not force multiplying if you only can cause drama and strife. Okay? A force multiplier, to me, is well-rounded. They cause the drama, they cause the strikes, and they know how to apologize when necessary. Knows how to come in and steal a scene. Knows how to film a scene properly. Now, her and my good girl over there, Kenya Moore, are good friends. Kenya Moore teach Miss Hale how to be a real force multiplier. I'm just saying. And then Cameron says, you, have, you all have come after my marriage time after time again. And then, and then it just then um, Latin Mill says, well, I mean, you know, what you said about me is not true. It is true. Girl, I did a nice little short that I got my most views ever on when I first started doing these videos about going on there crying. Go check that short out, by the way. Still getting good views, but um, go check it out so we can you know, raise that up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the notification bell. But, but, back to the show. And so, Karen's done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. turning the other cheek because you're so, so disrespectful. So, all you do is attack my marriage. She says, well, at least I did bring it to your face. And then, and then, uh, old Mia lying back. <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot goes and says, Sasquatch goes and says, Well, that's why I won't tell what I really know. See, 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 that's why I don't like that chick. I now Karen lies. So we got two liars talking to each other and or against each other, but Karen is letting her know, you know, I brought you here, I could take you out. Cause you, you know, Gordon is broke at this point. So, <laughs> so I guess your little rapper will keep you on the show, or should I say the radio disc jockey, which is why I haven't shared the true story. You don't know my true story, man. You want to try it? Want to try it? This heifer here. Yeah. So they all get in, so they all get in the confessional, and Wendy says, "I don't know when this chick is lying, cause she, you know, she's so good at it." And then, uh. Karen says, I mean, Giselle and Ashley says that, yeah, we, we know that, you know, Karen has something to hide. So do you. How about you quit hiding all those uh, toys and uh, BDSM toys that you and Michael have over there for not when you just bring in women, but when you bring in uh, young, young males. I didn't say underage men. I said young men. Okay? And young females. And, and, and dogs, cats, horses, and, and, and uh, everything else that you could think of to bring in into your uh, boudoir. Now, just jokes, people. Just jokes. None's confirmed. Everything's alleged in my opinion. Just jokes right there. Just jokes. I'm just saying. It seems like the guy from the Shire a.k.a. Lord of the Rings. Seems like, you know, everybody thinks that he is, like, just cheating on Ashley. No, 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 no. No. This is one of those sexual beings or sexual being. What well, well, I should say, sexual beings that will try anything. What did I say? Try sexual, if you will. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, in my opinion. So, Karen says she has nothing to hide. And she says, don't be mad. You want to try it? You know, keep trying me. And uh, so, I have to say that Karen was kind of stuttering over her words here. But as far as passes go, nobody should understand what a pass is better than me, okay? This woman is 17. How old is Ray? 80? I mean, and Karen is a vibrant woman. I mean, 
I don't think she's going to sit up and not have sex for 20 more years to catch up the rain. I don't see or see that. Um, but, you know, she does hunch that pillow. But, I mean, it's, the, you know, some people just like the human touch, if you will. Now, Kiana, I just love. Right? I think she just should have more scenes as a friend. But we all know how friends work out on this show. Shout out to the scholar. And she's like, you know, you're talking at each other, not to each other. You know, it's like they're five and six years old sitting at the table. Don't know how to carry on a conversation without conflict. And normally when these conflicts arise, Giselle is sitting there. I'm just saying. So, Candace calls Chris, and Chris lets her know that, um, you know, everything is going good. How's the, you know, the trip going? And then he notices that she went to sleep with glasses on, her sunglasses on. He tells her, what are you doing with your sunglasses on? She's like, oh, okay, uh, it's bright in here. Girl, I don't know how you feel. I can't stand sunlight coming in when I'm trying to get a good deep sleep. You want it to be dark, dark, as if you will. And this conversation that Mia and Neka and Giselle had when they were talking about Karen is the reason why if I were Karen, I could not F with Giselle for the rest of my life. I mean, cordial, just like Wendy said about Neka, but... This whole frenemies going back and forth between them is BS because Giselle is not that latest friend. And it seems like Karen just keeps on trying to, you know, keep this man Giselle. Was it you could together? You know, mess up. And she pays no attention to that. She has no loyalty in that area. And I, uh, in my opinion, I see the same thing with her and Wendy as AKAs. I wonder how she treated her last week. Now, I'm not talking about the ones, her, her neophytes, or whatever you call them, the ones coming up on her. I'm wondering how she treated the people on her line. Did they make her president of the chapter? Because I promise she still had, like, she over there in Hampton, Hayes, and these women. So we play a stupid game called Answer the Damn Question by um, Robin. And they talk about. X as usual, put an S in front of it. And, uh, you know, if they disagree, they have to, and they think they're lying, they have to press the button. So they asked Robin, um, they asked Wendy how many times a week she had sex. And she was like, you know, maybe a couple weeks, you know, that's that's like, you know, when I'm on my cycle and, you know, when I'm traveling. Because, you know, Wendy's a commentator, okay? She's real. She has real jobs. And then it's like, Mm, that little Ashley say you don't have X on your period see that's what I'm talking about when I say a sexual deviant she has been exposed to everything every type of sex that you can have in the Shire by the by Schmiegel I'm just saying so we get to Kiana and she was like, uh, I filmed all my fantasy. And then Wendy's like, boo, boo, pressing the button. But hey, Kiana says, I had a whole fantasy. <laughs> you better tell me. So we get to Wendy. And like I said, she says she goes by two weeks. And then here comes Nasty uh, Ashley, just like her nasty man. Tell myself, girl, because you know, we go through a holy face. And she's like, you mean holy, all the holes? You mean the third brown eye? And then uh, uh, Giselle gets some confessional. She's just like, well, all those things that Ashley and the Schmiegel have done in the bedroom, I mean, she's getting things confused. All those nasty girls, nasty girls. Do you think she's a nasty girl? I do. I do. And to keep that man pleased, he probably went her brown hole. But then again, you know, there's Dr. Helmley. Dr. Helmley says she does it out and let him put it in the air. Daddy want to put it in the air. Daddy can put it in the air. So, hey, you know, hey, 
Like I said, I believe uh, Mr. Schmigel does it all from the window to the wall. Ski, 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 ski. Motherfucker. Ski, ski. So, you know. Ain't nothing he don't do. He probably put it in a tree hole if he could. Moisturized at that. Then we finally get the old nasty Robin. And old nasty Robin, oh well. Of course, poor Karen. Karen talking about she she just uh not how many partners she has. She talking about she didn't have weird dream, child. Yeah. I believe women have weird dreams. I mean, you can go to sleep fantasizing and then wake up, you know, m- moss, as you will, if you will. Uh-huh. Shout out to uh, the clumps. <laughs> I get moss. <laughs> so, anyway, then we get the old nasty Giselle, and Giselle done had every kind of man, so she could describe what all she had and you know, which one's better, the, the the preacher man, the athletic man, the postman, the ring twice, the milk man, the table man, any kind of man. You should say I can give you her experience on. So that's what Karen said. You know, you were how from the Hamptons. <laughs> we all know. See? And then, uh, so she gives her experiences, and then she's like, well, none of which one's better? And she's like, well, you know, I, the athletes are something different. And so, they ask her, is Jason and Jimmy, Joey, is he an athlete? And then they realize that he's not. So, we finally get the Roble. Now, Roble is in a same-sex relationship, so, therefore... When she goes with Juan, Juan wants to see, he wants to watch his fantasies to watch. It's just a fantasy. Image in a magazine. So he's, you know, imagining her and wanting to watch her and probably has imagined in his mind all of his Canadian women with Robin and then all of his, you know, Schmeagol type men. Because, you know, I think one is G-A-Y for pay. So, you know what I'm saying. I said, I think, in my opinion, allegedly. I see it. What do I see? It. So, actually, last time she had sex, she had sex in January. But she went and got her little jump off. A little bit, you know, cause, you know, she's still a married woman. Still. And then, you know, of course, Karen said, was it with Michael? Well, of course it was. You know, she still scoring to Michael. Yeah, that Karen said about Juanita and uh, Roble. You know, who, who, who would want to see one? One, one would want to see anybody driving with anybody except for him. <laughs> Facts. So we get to Mia. And Mia's question is, of course, what about that rapper dude that you've been fooling around with? Fooling, fooling around. So, of all people, the person who has permission to cheat on her husband, Mia, the liar Thornton, Sasquatch, declines to answer. Because he don't want his name out there. Not yet. But he has done more interviews about your relationship in current time than you have, sis. So, then, you know, she says... Aneka, who would you trade husband with? She's whoever has the best game that day, you know, either G or Juan. But, I mean, hey, that has brought me a lot tell. And then she gets some confession and was like, what about, uh, who would you share Mary with? Uh, Bill. Put a K in front of her. So she goes on to say, um, it would probably be Eddie because I need to free him from, um, old girl over there. See? See? You're starting something. I always want to be starting some. Shout out to Michael Jackson. And Candace only has sex twice a week. Candace be tired. But Candace ain't going to make no baby but have sex twice a week. You can. You can. Timing. See, not all of these women in an educated circle <laughs> knows nothing of how to reproduce. I see. About timing. 
that's how women get pregnant on the first time. Now, why when they um get ready to go to the beach and they get dropped off at the beach location, they would mention cuckoo cuckoo choos again. And uh, you know, Candy says hers is now hairless. Do you look like a, a hairless cat down there? <laughs> then when they get out the van, Ashley's cuckoo cuckoo chew sweat print is left on the seat. Disgusting. See, that's why I couldn't drive no Uber. You can't be leaving no cuckoo cuckoo chew sweat prints on my car. No. No, no, no. So, they get to discussing around something that looks delicious that has my mouth water, which I don't have any idea what that is. Something mashed off in a cook, coconut. So, they start discussing Ashley, and Ashley brings up how, you know, she can't discuss a whole lot of things about her ex-life because, with an S in front of it, because, you know, she's still going through her divorce. That's why I'm calling her divorce. Shout out to Tisha, because she can't talk. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I'm calling her divorce. Shout out to Tisha, because, you know, she's not really going to divorce that man. And they're like, are you with this man? Just be honest. Are you with him five, for financial reasons? And then Karen said, well, I would think that's what it was. You know, to stand up on the sprinkle and all. You know, you can't keep visiting the Shire, you know, having babies with that big-headed thing. You know? <laughs> you have a big head, hey, on a head yourself. <laughs> but what? So then they talk about Gordon, right? And so when they asked him, well, were you with Gordon for financial reasons? Oh, no, no. No, of course not. Darling, darling, I had way more money than he did. Even though I was a stripper whore that passed out lobster and, and steak. No, of course. You know, money is not assets. And then he said, but will you pay like $10,000 a night to be his private dancer? Dancer for money. Any old music would do this private answer. And she says, no, 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 no. See, cash is different from assets. This $10,000, that wasn't nothing. I had an inheritance. About who? Child? Who? You told us you was in the foster care system, your pappy was a rolling stone, and your mama was a, a crackhead. So those three things do not lead to inheritance. Maybe you had a deheritance. <laughs> However, now, I, as a former, here I go for my social work skills. I do have to give me a something here. Now, here in Mississippi, I don't know how much it is there or whatever. We do provide children that have been in foster care a monthly stipend to get them on their feet so maybe between using her stipend money and her private dental money she might have amassed somewhat of a fortune but we're not gonna say that she had more money than Gordon now are we is she really doing this see that's why I don't like me I don't like life I don't that's a broken tail y'all know that yeah, yeah. What about uh when you was the boss, the boss, the boss, the CEO, the boss, the boss? What about that? Girl, stop. Stop. Just stop. Now, you know she got to be lying if Miss Hale was confused. Because that's all she does is keep up hell. That's why I call her Miss Hale. And then Miss Hale, you know, she's one of Miss Hale's loyal, faithful men. So she really didn't want to say, you know, this girl is lying. Candace. Candace. She says, I'm not knowledgeable on the world of stripper heiresses. <laughs> but I have been opened up into this world. <laughs> By who? Lying me. Child, a woman lie more than a bare skin root. So, she actually goes on to talk about how she's, you know, struggling and scratching and surviving good times. Well, we know that's a lie, right? Michael don't give her any money. But, uh, yeah, I don't believe her at all. So, um, she says that her life coach, she was a very beautiful woman, by the way, says that she needs to set a goal. And her goal is, I'm going to start best thinking. 
Living and I'm thriving, living and I'm thriving, living and I'm thriving. <laughs> it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad as how I sounded. Okay, but I'm just saying it was tickling me because we were so scared she was going to sing Black Coffee or whatever the name of it was. <laughs> That's right. Who I was just like, please don't sing black coffee, sugar coffee, whatever it was. Yeah. Okay, so you know, I don't know how much intellectual property that is, so I just had to cut that right on off. But I just wanted to hear you see that football head had a good little tune there. Oh. And by the way, guess who was pouring into her? Yeah. Her arch nemesis. A good old kitty clicking Candace. Now, word on the street is that some of us out here in these YouTube streets believe that they have indeed capitulated on some level. Maybe lick the nip. Accidentally felt on a two or uh, a nip, felt on a boob, or maybe put the fingers or uh, let the fingers do the walking instead of the talking. <laughs> However, I do believe that there has it's got to be something because baby, football head can drag Candace from. Here to Bethesda <laughs> and back. And she still pours into that football head. Y'all remember those faces that Roble and uh, Miss Hale said that they was hanging on Candace and Wendy while they're sitting up there giving uh, Karen praise for being triple 20. That's exactly what they're doing. Hmm. Scow. Hmm. Stank face. Mm, but you call Wendy stank face. Wendy, 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 Wendy. In my opinion, looks better from head to toe than Giselle on her worst day. And I don't mean Giselle don't have a pretty face and she don't know it. But to me, to me, Wendy has the total package. Not just a pretty face, pretty body, pretty eyes, wigs on point and clothes on point, and they do fit. <laughs> okay? So, total package goes to Wendy Osefo, and that's for the entire cast. I see it with what I see. Now, Kiana is on her tail, though. That Kiana's cute. Now, Karen is getting embarrassed because she has told Batches that she has a personal trainer and they're trying to insinuate that just like with uh, old Mo, or FOMO over there, that she is indeed sleeping with the trainer. However, I believe it was indeed true about Monique, allegedly. So they have a little mini photo shoot and they name each other and they're having fun. And this is what we love to see, right? Karen, Hewlett, DMV, sexy. Now, Robin told her to take off her cover up. Did she take her off? That Robin makes me sick. Neca, sexy, as charged. Like, you know, a play on her being a lawyer. And Jazia, uh, Marilyn's fine. And Jazia Brain, Captain Ben Coop. Because what else could they say about her? They can't make a play on a career. No, they ain't still saying that me making boss moves. They didn't say that, did they? Moving right along. Wendy, doctor of love, addressed me correctly, sweetie. I know, that's right. So, um, Candace has the best poses. Because we all know Candace came from the pageant world, baby, and she knows how to work the camera. Okay? And she is... Um, Booty cheeks best. She came from Jesus. <laughs> That's a play on when Sharice asked her where she came from. She said, I came from Jesus. All right. There's Trap Darby. Newly separated. Perfect fit. 
although she should have put in parentheses, move it, football head. Now, with all of that and all of the fun they had and all of the love they showed to each other during the photo shoot, it's time, it's time to go. So, it's so many housewives on here. With the photo shoot, I have forgot about Karen. <laughs> Robin, so boring. Robin's the year if I don't get nothing, just nothing peppy, nothing exciting, just plain old Robin. If y'all don't drop us down to a damn friend of the show. But then again, if we get rid of Giselle, who will she be friends with? Like I said, everybody's getting along and leave it up to Chef Roble. There it goes, running his mouth like it does and acting as if Wendy and Candace have something against poor Grace, who is very innocent in this, but that's how Miss Hell does. She loves to take it to hell, her and Roble. So, like I said, drop her down. But, Matter of fact, drop both of them down to friends of the show, and then that way they can be only friends with each other just like they are right now. And then they won't have to talk about their personal life because Giselle's just Giselle's giving nothing to her personal life anyway. So there you go. That wraps that up. Anyway, as I do when I close, I'm going to chunk them up. Do see Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell button. Hit that notification bell button. You guys have been hitting that bell button, and you have been been into acting with Diva D. Okay? So when you hit that bell button, then you know I am coming to you with all of my entertaining ways. Okay? Including the impressions and the good comedy. So I will holler at you guys later. Bye!